Pierce Brosnan is now about 70, how he lives is sad. Do you really know about the tragic life behind the spotlight of Pierce Brosnan, the esteemed actor? The reality is far from the glittering facade we often see. Throughout his nearly seven decade existence, he endured the heartbreak of his first wife's battle with ovarian cancer, leading to her untimely death, faced the same loss again when his daughter succumbed to the same disease and survived the near fatal accident of his son. This video will unveil the harrowing obstacles he faced revealing a side of his story that might take you by shock. Prepare to be astonished by the resilience of Pierce Brosnan. Let's dive in. Pierce Brosnan's life is a tapestry of dramatic highs and lows, a narrative that begins in the small Irish town where he was born. His early years were marred by a notable absence, his father Tom, who left the family shortly after Pierce's birth. Young Brosnan experienced the trials of displacement when his mother moved to London to seek better employment as a nurse, while he stayed behind being shuttled between relatives and even resided in a boarding house. The void left by his father's absence lingered for decades. It wasn't until the age of 31 that Pierce met Tom, a fleeting encounter about which he later recounted to Esquire, he was a good whistler and he had a good walk. That's as much as I know about him. Despite the scarcity of memories, this brief intersection was profound enough to linger in Brosnan's reflections of his past. Prejudice was a shadow that often followed Brosnan when he eventually moved to London, where his Irish roots were not so easily embraced. Brosnan assimilated into his South London neighborhood by hiding his accent, an attempt to evade the biting sting of discrimination. His feelings were candidly shared during an interview with CBS Sunday Morning as he navigated these formative years with resilience. An early desire for acting took hold of Brosnan amidst these challenging times, and he set out to hone his craft. It was a journey that proverbially took him from sweeping the floors of a theatre workshop to commanding the spotlight on international stages. The compass of Pierce Brosnan's life found true north when he met Cassandra Harris. Their encounter wasn't just a meeting of hearts, it was a rendezvous that seemed destined Harris, an actress of considerable talent, became Brosnan's partner in every sense. Their union in 1980 was not just a marital bond, but a fusion of dreams, aspirations, and eventually shared sorrows. Together they welcomed a son, Sean, into the world, and Brosnan embraced Harris's children from her previous marriage, adopting them and thus weaving a tightly knit family fabric. Brosnan's love for Cassandra was a beacon that guided him, even through the tempest that was to come. For 11 years, Brosnan and Harris shared a love story that Hollywood scripts are made of until tragedy struck. Cassandra's battle with ovarian cancer was both valiant and heart-wrenching. After four years of fighting the disease, she succumbed to it in 1991, leaving a void in Brosnan's life that was palpable. This is the first time in my life I've ever experienced bereavement and it's overwhelming, Brosnan confessed to People magazine in 1992. His grief was a testament to the depth of his love, a love that, even in absence, shaped his life henceforth. As the adage goes, after rain comes a rainbow. For Brosnan, this proverbial rainbow appeared in the form of Keely Shea Smith, a journalist with whom he fell deeply in love. Their paths crossed in 1994, leading to a relationship that presented Brosnan with new hope and the courage to open his heart once again. Their marriage in 2001, amidst the lush environs of Ireland, was not just a celebration of their love, but also a tribute to the journey they had embarked on together. The couple was blessed with two sons, Dylan and Paris, who brought further joy to their lives. Smith's unwavering support was a beacon for Brosnan, especially as he navigated the treacherous waters of grief. His acknowledgement of her role in his healing process was profound. The memory of Cassie and her fight against cancer is never forgotten, Brosnan noted in a discussion with the Daily Mail in 2013. Yet in the same breath he celebrated the strength and guidance he found in Smith, referring to her as his North Star, always looking out for me. It was a testament to the capacity of the human heart to love, lose and love again. If you like this video, please leave a number 9 in the comments below. 
Amidst the glimmer of Pierce Brosnan's successful career, shadows of sorrow lingered, particularly embodied by the loss of his beloved daughter, Charlotte, in 2013. Like her mother before her, Charlotte Brosnan waged a stoic battle against ovarian cancer, a battle that she ultimately lost at the tender age of 41. Brosnan's grief over her passing was a poignant reminder of the fragility of life and the cruel repetitiveness of this particular family tragedy. In the days leading to her passing, Charlotte married her longtime boyfriend Alex in a ceremony that was imbued with both joy and impending sorrow. Brosnan proudly walked Charlotte down the aisle, a moment of profound significance, crystallizing a brief oasis of happiness amidst their collective battle with her illness. It was the most moving day of my life, a wedding guest reflected to the sun, emphasizing the poignancy of the day. Brosnan's relentless battle with grief following Charlotte's death was a testament to his strength and the depth of his familial bonds. The aftermath of Charlotte's passing was a period of intense grief for Brosnan, who had now experienced the devastating impact of ovarian cancer twice over. To cope with the loss, Brosnan leaned on the pillars of his life, family and work. He found solace in the arms of his loved ones and the structure of his acting career, which allowed him to channel his emotions into his craft. I had good family around me, I had my children and I knew how to work. And you had to, you know, find a job as an actor and plough forward," Brosnan shared with Larry King. The spectre of loss continued to cast a shadow over Brosnan's life with the passing of his longtime producing partner and confidant, Beau St. Clair, in 2016. Having founded the production company Irish Dreamtime together in 1996, St. Clair was more than just a collaborator. She was a cherished friend whose vision and spirit were integral to Brosnan's creative journey. Her battle with ovarian cancer, mirroring that of Cassandra and Charlotte Brosnan, ended, leaving Brosnan to mourn yet another formidable woman in his life. He lamented, Beau was the sister I never had, my dearest friend for 30 years. She had style, grace, humor, intellect, and a kind heart that I will forever miss. The loss of Sinclair marked not only the end of a significant professional partnership, but also the loss of a profound personal connection. In the face of this adversity, Brosnan's coping mechanisms were once again put to the test. His resilience, albeit shaken, did not waver. Publicly, Brosnan paid tribute to Sinclair's life and legacy, but privately, he sought to heal in the sanctuary provided by his family and his work, using these constants in his life as a compass to guide him through the turbulence of grief. In a twist that felt ripped from a heart-wrenching drama rather than his real life, Pierce Brosnan was faced with a parent's worst nightmare in April 2000. His son, Sean, then 13, was involved in a severe car accident on a mountain road in Malibu, California, resulting in catastrophic injuries, including multiple fractures and spinal injuries. The accident caused by drunk driving saw the car plunging an alarming 150 to 200 feet down a steep cliff necessitating a dramatic rescue for Sean and others involved. Pierce Brosnan's response to this horrific event was one of profound gratitude toward the rescue workers who he credited with saving his son's life. Taking my son and his friends from the jaws of death, Brosnan publicly thanked the Los Angeles rescue teams, emphasizing the critical role they played in the aftermath of the accident. This sentiment underscored not just his appreciation for their efforts, but also the close call that could have led to an even more tragic outcome. The recovery process was undoubtedly a trying time for both Sean and Pierce. Amid the turmoil, life's priorities came into sharp focus for Brosnan, who postponed significant personal plans, including his wedding to Keely Shea Smith, underscoring his commitment to being there for his son during this crucial period. The long-term impact of the accident on Brosnan and his family was significant, Although not explicitly stating his use of professional therapy, Brosnan's actions in the years following suggest a man deeply affected by the events. His choice to tackle roles that explored themes of loss and trauma hint at a form of cathartic processing, using his art as a means to heal and reflect on the fragility of life. The harrowing experience of Sean's accident and the ensuing recovery process unveiled a side of Brosnan that the public rarely sees, the devoted father navigating fear and uncertainty yet remaining a pillar of strength for his son. It's a testament to his resilience and the depth of love within his family, illustrating how they clung to each other and moved through the darkness together.
Pierce Brosnan's tenure as James Bond, which spanned four films, starting with Golden Eye in 1995, is often hailed as a defining era in the storied franchise. Stepping into the shoes of the world's most famous spy, Brosnan brought a blend of suavity, wit and vulnerability that thoroughly refreshed the character for a new generation. His portrayal across Goldeneye, Tomorrow Never Dies, The World Is Not Enough and Die Another Day, was met with acclaim from both audiences and critics, cementing his place in cinematic history. Reflecting on his journey as Bond, Brosnan revealed the role's profound impact on his career and persona, demonstrating how intertwined his identity had become with that of the MI6 agent. However, Brosnan's journey as Bond did not have the fairy tale ending many might have anticipated. The negotiations for a fifth Bond film fell through, leading to Brosnan's abrupt departure from the role. The actor described feeling as though he had been kicked to the curb by the franchise, a sentiment that highlights the unexpected nature of his exit. This period marked a poignant chapter in Brosnan's career, one that would see him part ways with a character that had significantly defined his public and professional life. Despite the disappointment, Brosnan spoke of his time as Bond with gratitude, emphasizing the doors it had opened for him and the legacy he left behind as one of the beloved incarnations of the character. The end of Brosnan's tenure as James Bond marked the beginning of a diversified acting journey that saw him exploring a variety of roles across genres. From the art heist thriller, The Thomas Crown Affair to the action-packed The November Man and the musical charm of Mamma Mia, Brosnan demonstrated his versatility as an actor. His post-Bond career has been characterized by a willingness to take on different challenges and a continued commitment to his craft. Despite the undoubted associations with James Bond, Brosnan has been able to carve out a distinct identity beyond the tuxedo and gadgets, proving his enduring appeal and talent as an actor. If you like this video, please leave a number 9 in the comments below. Pierce Brosnan's personal experience with ovarian cancer, having lost his wife and daughter, drives his advocacy for research and awareness. He channels his grief into action, participating in campaigns and fundraising to support those affected. His efforts aim to honor his loved ones and spare others from similar pain. Additionally, Brosnan is dedicated to environmental activism, using his platform to promote conservation and preserve the planet for future generations. Beyond the glare of the spotlight, Brosnan's personal life is marked by his enduring relationship with Keely Shea Smith, his wife, since 2001. Together, they share a family life filled with love, navigating challenges and celebrating victories as one. Brosnan often credits Smith with being his steadfast support, particularly through periods of grief and loss. Outside of his family and advocacy, Brosnan is known for his interests in environmental preservation, art and surfing showcasing a life rich with passions that extend well beyond his acting career. One of Brosnan's most notable passions is painting. This hobby, which he has pursued alongside his acting career, offers a creative outlet that allows him to express himself beyond the realm of film and television. Brosnan often paints as a form of relaxation and has even set up temporary studios while away on shoots to devote time to this hobby. His love for art has not only served as a personal solace, but also as a means to give back. Brosnan has sold his artwork to raise money for charitable causes, underscoring how his interests align with his philanthropic endeavors. Brosnan's legacy as a successful actor and a cultural icon is undeniably etched into the annals of cinematic history. From his breakthrough roles in television to his iconic turn as James Bond, Brosnan has displayed a remarkable range and depth in his performances. His contributions to the arts extend beyond his acting prowess. Through his production company, Irish Dreamtime, Brosnan has also shaped the storytelling landscape, bringing to life films that resonate with audiences worldwide. His impact on the James Bond franchise is particularly noteworthy. Brosnan's interpretation of the suave spy revitalized the series in the 1990s, introducing Bond to a new generation and redefining the character for the modern era. His portrayal blended the traditional elements that fans cherished with a more complex and humanized version of the character, thus broadening the franchise's appeal. Brosnan's Bond is celebrated for bridging the gap between the Cold War era spy and the contemporary hero, ensuring the franchise's relevance and survival into the 21st century.
Pierce Brosnan's journey through life portrays a narrative that's every bit as compelling as the roles he's graced on screen. Amidst glittering success, Brosnan has navigated profound sorrow with a resilience that inspires. But what's your take on his remarkable ability to turn personal tragedy into advocacy and art? Share your thoughts, and if Brosnan's endurance in the face of adversity has touched you in any way, drop a comment with letter B below. Don't forget, if you're a fan of stories that delve deep into the lives of iconic figures like Brosnan, hit like. Subscribe to Iconic Inside and join our community for more heartfelt content. The controversial scene that took Gunsmoke off the air. You know Gunsmoke, right? The classic western that captivated millions with its tales of law and order in Dodge City. But what if I told you that one scene, just one scene, was so controversial it almost ended the show's entire run? Imagine for a moment the shockwaves that rippled through living rooms across America when a single moment on Gunsmoke sparked outrage. This isn't about a fist fight or a saloon brawl. This scene was different. It was a scene that pushed boundaries and divided viewers and nearly cost Gunsmoke its legacy. So what was this scene? And how did it almost bring down a beloved Western? Stick around, because you won't believe the truth behind the controversial scene that took Gunsmoke off the air. Gunsmoke, a classic Western drama, captivated audiences for two decades, from 1955 to 1975. It was a beloved show, not just in America, but across the globe. Every week, viewers tuned in to follow the adventures of Marshal Matt Dillon, played by the towering James Arness. But did you know, Gunsmoke actually started as a radio show? It was a popular radio play that caught the attention of television executives who decided to bring it to the small screen. The radio show continued for six more years, from 1952 to 1961. Initially, the role of Matt Dillon was offered to John Wayne, but he declined due to the demanding TV schedule. Despite this, he gave the show a positive review before it aired. The show's early seasons were sponsored by L.M. Cigarettes, a stark reminder of how times have changed. William Conrad, who played Matt Dillon on the radio, was initially considered for the TV role, but James Arness was chosen for his physical presence. Gunsmoke's opening scene, featuring a gunfight between Matt Dillon and another gunman, was a staple of the show for years. However, around 1970, political pressure against violence on television led to a change in the opening sequence. In 1967, CBS planned to cancel Gunsmoke, but the audience protested, leading to the cancellation of Gilligan's Island instead. However, there's more to the story than meets the eye. Gunsmoke held the primetime record for most episodes until The Simpsons surpassed it in 2018. Gunsmoke addressed social issues of its time, albeit within the context of the Western genre. The show explored themes of racial prejudice, gender roles, and the complexities of law and order, often reflecting the realities of the Wild West. However, these issues were often presented through the lens of the Wild West, with the show's focus on action and adventure often overshadowing these social concerns. Despite airing for only 20 seasons, Gunsmoke had more episodes per season than modern TV shows. The casting process for Gunsmoke was a long and arduous one. James Arness was one of 26 finalists, but the first choice was William Conrad, who had played a US Marshal on the radio. James Arness, a real-life tough guy, filmed every episode of the show despite a leg injury from World War II. His towering height, six feet seven inches, made him a formidable presence on screen, but it also contributed to arthritis later in life. The pain was so severe that Arness could only film for one day at a time. The producers accommodated his condition, allowing him to complete all his scenes for an episode in a single day. Amanda Blake, the stunning red-haired actress who played Miss Kitty Russell, the saloon owner, appeared in over 500 episodes of the show. But in the radio version, Miss Kitty's profession was more suggestive. Norman Macdonnell, the creator of the series, never explicitly stated what Miss Kitty did for a living, but he hinted at it, saying, Kitty is just someone Matt has to visit every once in a while. This led Time magazine to speculate that she wasn't selling candy bars. Amanda Blake, a seasoned actress, had a strong desire to play Miss Kitty. She persistently pursued the role until she was cast. She played the saloon owner for 19 years, becoming close friends with Glenn Strange, who played the bartender. 
Sadly, Blake left the show before its end due to the passing of her friend. The role of Miss Kitty was initially offered to Polly Bond, wife of Tommy Bond from The Little Rascals. However, she declined the role because she would have earned more than her husband who worked at a TV station. She feared it would cause problems in their marriage. The casting of Matt Dillon was a crucial decision. Some say John Wayne was approached for the role, but there's no concrete evidence. Charles Marquis Warren, a director who knew Wayne, said Wayne wouldn't have been interested as he wasn't a big fan of television. However, Wayne did suggest James Arness for the role. With so many episodes, it's hard to remember all the actors who graced Gunsmoke. Ten actors were mainstays, seven appeared frequently, and countless guest stars graced the screen. Burt Reynolds, known for his charismatic charm, played Quint Asper, a half-Native American character from 1962 to 1965. Asper couldn't drink in Dodge City due to his heritage. Reynolds went on to become a successful actor, passing away at the age of 82. Dennis Weaver, who played Chester, the funny sidekick, was initially considered too charming for the role. The producers asked him to give his character a physical problem, and he chose a limp, which he practiced in his yard. However, Weaver later regretted his decision as he had to maintain the limp throughout the 290 episodes. Doc Adams, played by Milburn Stone, was a significant part of Gunsmoke for over 10 years. He had a fascinating background, having studied in Philadelphia, worked as a doctor for gamblers on boats, and even known Mark Twain. Despite his prominent role, Stone's first name was unknown to many viewers. After 16 years, the producers allowed him to choose a first name for his character, and he selected Galen. Gunsmoke also featured guest appearances by many famous actors from other shows. Christopher Knight, Eve Plum, and Susan Olsen, all from The Brady Bunch, made appearances in the show. If you like this video, please leave a number nine in the comments below. Charles Bronson, who played James Bond, appeared in one episode as a crazy guy named Krigo. He even reprised the role a few years later. David Carradine, known for Kung Fu, played a horse thief, while Leslie Nielsen from Naked Gun played a gang leader. Other famous faces like Nick Nolte, Dennis Hopper, Sam Elliott, Richard Dreyfus, Kurt Russell and Harrison Ford also made guest appearances. Ken Curtis, a versatile actor, played various roles on Gunsmoke before landing the unforgettable role of Festus Hagen in episode 13 of season 8. He became a regular cast member a year later, bringing laughter and a watchful eye to the streets of Dodge City. Curtis based Festus on a childhood friend named Cedar Jack, who made wooden posts. Glenn Strange, another talented actor, played bartender Sam Noonan on Gunsmoke. But his career extended far beyond that role. He was famously Frankenstein's monster in three movies in the 1940s, taking over the role after Boris Karloff's passing. Strange was a master of both horror and comedy, as evidenced by his role in Abbott and Costello Meet Frankenstein in 1948. Gunsmoke was his final achievement before his passing from lung cancer in 1973. Strange's influence on the cast was profound. Buck Taylor, his friend and Gunsmoke co-star, named his third son after him as a tribute to his memory. James Arness's war injury had a significant impact on the production of Gunsmoke. During World War II, he served in the US Army and was injured in the Battle of Anzio in Italy. The injury, which earned him the Bronze Star and Purple Heart, left him with lasting pain. As a result, Gunsmoke had to plan Arness's scenes carefully, especially those involving walking. James Arness and Milburn Stone were mainstays in almost every episode of Gunsmoke. Stone nearly matched Arness's record, missing only six episodes due to a heart attack in 1971. Despite his health struggles, Arness persevered, filming all his scenes in one day to allow for a week of recovery. Gunsmoke was a top-rated show for four years. Gunsmoke presented a romanticized portrayal of the Wild West, focusing on the exciting adventures of cowboys, lawmen, and outlaws. While the show offered glimpses of the harsh realities of frontier life, it ultimately presented a sanitized and idealized version of the West. Gunsmoke's portrayal of Native Americans has been criticized for its stereotypical representations. The show often depicted Native Americans as hostile and dangerous, perpetuating harmful stereotypes that were prevalent in the media at the time. When it became an hour-long show in 1957, viewership dropped, 
but it regained popularity in the 1960s and 1970s. The show's popularity led to the production of five TV movies. Gunsmoke returned to Dodge in 1987, Gunsmoke The Last Apache in 1990, Gunsmoke to The Last Man in 1992, Gunsmoke The Long Ride in 1993, and Gunsmoke One Man's Justice in 1994. James Arness starred in all five films, but they were not as well received as the original series. The phrase Get Out of Dodge became famous due to the show's setting in Dodge City, Kansas. It gained popularity in the 1960s and 1970s. Matt Dillon, the show's protagonist, was a tough and stoic character who rarely showed romance. In the show's 20 years and 635 episodes, he only kissed a woman once in the third episode of the 19th season, aptly titled Matt's Love Story. Chester, played by Dennis Weaver, was a non-violent character who didn't carry a weapon. His limp was added to distinguish him from Matt Dillon, but Weaver later regretted the decision, as it became a burden to maintain. Ken Curtis, who played Festus, appeared in 307 episodes of Gunsmoke. In one of the original 30-minute episodes, he played an Indian. Later, he portrayed a Kansas cattleman who became friends with Chester only to meet a tragic end. If you like this video, please leave a number 9 in the comments below. James Arness, a hero on television, was also a hero in real life. He served in the military during World War II despite his leg injury. He received numerous awards for his service, including the Bronze Star, Purple Heart, and Combat Infantry Badge. Marshall Trimble, a Wild West historian, estimated that Matt Dillon shot 407 people in Gunsmoke, including both the TV series and the TV movies. The final kill in the series is perhaps the most memorable. In the final episode, William Gary Busey's character died on screen due to a brain tumour. The show's opening gunfight was a staple for years, but as the Vietnam War escalated and concerns about violence grew, the opening sequence was changed to a less violent one. The ending of Gunsmoke was abrupt and unexpected. CBS cancelled the show without informing the cast or crew. The final episode, The Sharecroppers, was a light and forgettable story about Festus, who accidentally shoots a farm boy and then works on the farm to make up for it. It lacked the gravitas and satisfying closure that Gunsmoke deserved after 20 years on television. Gunsmoke was a groundbreaking show in terms of its production techniques, considering the limitations of television technology at the time. The show employed innovative camera angles, lighting and editing techniques to create a sense of realism and excitement, immersing viewers in the Wild West world. The show's use of sound was masterful. The sounds of horseshoes on cobblestones, saloon doors swinging open and gunshots added to the realism and atmosphere of the Wild West, contributing to the show's enduring appeal. Gunsmoke embraced location filming in the American West to enhance its visual appeal and create a sense of authenticity. The show's producers carefully selected locations that matched the setting of Dodge City, Kansas, giving the series a realistic and visually captivating backdrop. CBS likely felt that Gunsmoke was outdated and wanted to replace it with newer shows, despite its continued success. The sudden cancellation of Gunsmoke was a disappointment to fans and the cast alike. However, the TV movie Return to Dodge helped to rectify the situation, providing a sense of closure for the show. The cancellation of Gunsmoke was not an accident. CBS planned it that way. David R. Greenland's book, The Gunsmoke Chronicles, A New History of Television's Greatest Western, revealed that CBS cancelled the show without informing the cast or crew. James Arness recalled that they were all expecting another season of Gunsmoke. CBS led them to believe that everything was fine, but then, just before production was set to begin, CBS abruptly cancelled the show. Even the producer, John Mantley, was unaware of the cancellation until he read about it in The Hollywood Reporter. Arness added that CBS didn't even bother to call Mantley. CBS had considered ending Gunsmoke before, but the reasons remain unclear. From 1957 to 1961, Gunsmoke was the most popular show on television, and it continued to be well-liked in the 1970s. In 1967, CBS almost cancelled the show, but a TV boss's wife intervened, as it was her favourite show. Instead of cancelling Gunsmoke, they cancelled Gilligan's Island by mistake. 
Gunsmoke then received the coveted time slot that Gilligan's Island had, and the show's popularity soared, returning to the top ten. Ultimately, CBS cancelled the show, but if they had given it a proper ending, it could have gone out with the same respect and closure as MASH. In 1975, Gunsmoke was temporarily removed from television due to a scene where a man was killed with a shotgun. The scene was deemed too violent for some viewers and it was subsequently removed. Gunsmoke, a show that captured the spirit of the Wild West, left an indelible mark on television history. Its influence on popular culture cannot be overstated. The show helped shape the public's perception of the Wild West, contributing to the romanticized image of the frontier. Its iconic characters, memorable storylines and atmospheric settings became synonymous with the genre. Gunsmoke explored complex themes that resonated with viewers. The show explored the struggle between law and order and the lawless nature of the frontier. It depicted the moral dilemmas faced by Matt Dillon as he wrestled with his duty to uphold the law while grappling with the realities of violence and corruption. So that's the story of the controversial scene that almost ended Gunsmoke. It's a reminder that even beloved shows aren't immune to controversy and that sometimes a single moment can have a lasting impact. It's a lesson in understanding how art reflects our changing world and how even fictional narratives can spark real life debate. What are your thoughts? Did you ever catch that controversial scene? What surprised you most about Gunsmoke's history? Do you think the cancellation of the film is right? If you think so, comment yes. If not, comment no. Let's keep the conversation going. Leave a comment and let me know what you think. And if you're enjoying these deep dives into classic TV, hit that like button and subscribe to Iconic Inside for more behind the scenes stories and fascinating facts.